So on Friday, September 2nd, I clocked off from work from my investment banking job for the last time. I'd spent over a year working in M&A, making $170,000 a year, and living in New York, which was my dream since college. If you had told me when I started that I would be quitting a year later, I would have laughed at you because at the time I hadn't learned the three lessons that I'm about to share with you today. And honestly, up until that point, I thought that I had made it. So I grew up in a middle class family and growing up my family was not the worst off but we definitely weren't the most well off either. And one of the clearest memories I have growing up is just how hard my dad worked. He worked two jobs to support us and every weekend he would drive me an hour into the city just to take violin lessons and also to take care of my grandparents. And my mom was a stay at home mom so she spent most of her time taking care of my siblings and I. And so when I graduated Georgetown, I pursued a job in investment banking, not just because I was interested in finance, but also because there was this deeper feeling of wanting to show my parents that, you know, all their hard work was worth it and that they could be proud that their son was working in a stable job, high paying, prestigious on Wall Street. And so I started working and in my first year, I primarily worked for two different managing directors. One we'll just call X and the other one let's call Y. So X and Y had very different work styles and X would always end their emails with thank you and whenever you sent them a quick note, materials, they would always say thank you. And Y rarely said thank you. And X was known to be one of the most productive managing directors at the firm, which means that they brought a lot of deals into the, the bank. Y was not as productive. And so under X, I closed my first deal as a investment banking analyst and I was super excited about it. Um, and under Y, I mostly worked on materials for meetings where these meetings never ultimately led to any live deal. And so under X and Y, I worked many, many weekends, but for different reasons. For X, it was usually because we were on a live deal, but for Y, it was usually because they just wanted to get something done for a meeting on Monday. So one of the recurring memories that I have from my time working with Y was them handing me a fresh set of comments on a Friday afternoon and looking straight into my eyes and saying, this shouldn't take too long. Don't spend your whole weekend on it. And almost with like a sarcastic smile on their face. And deep down, I knew that there was no way that this deck was gonna be finished on Friday afternoon. And what ultimately ended up happening most of the time was I would spend the weekend alone in my apartment finishing up these materials for the Monday meeting. And so that was when I learned my first lesson, which is that who you work for is much more important than what you're doing at work. So your manager is the one person that's gonna have the greatest impact on your experience at work. And it's not just because you report to them every day, but also because by process of osmosis, you will begin to internalize the same attitudes and habits that your manager has about work. And so you're gonna experience your manager's highs and also their lows, because when they're stressed, the stress will trickle down to you. So for example, if your boss is never around or doesn't check in on you often, that sends the message that they're disengaged from work and they don't care enough to check in on you. And so over time, you'll become also frustrated and disengaged because you'll begin to think, why am I working so hard if my boss doesn't even check in on me? Conversely, if your boss is like a micromanager, then this is also really bad because micromanagement at the core just demonstrates a lack of trust in your junior employee. Like why did they need to check in on you every couple minutes and know exactly what you're doing and exactly what you're working on? That's because they don't trust you. And over time, employees get really frustrated working for micromanager bosses. So you see, the person that you are working for is arguably more important than the actual work that you're doing. And when I was a student, a lot of people wanted to work in tech investment banking because tech was like the most sexy field. This was before all the layoffs, by the way. But what I later realized is that there are so many people working in tech investment banking who are utterly miserable, not because the actual work that they're doing isn't interesting, but because the firm that they work at and their manager create an environment where they are worked really hard, they're not given a lot of trust, and they're just not respected. Which brings me to my second lesson, which is that you are replaceable. So companies are always going to tout their culture as a selling point for students and, and fresh grads, but I'm not on YouTube to promote them. I'm here to just give you guys the raw truth. And so the raw truth, whether or not you like to hear it or not, is that companies don't care about you and you're extremely replaceable. Like companies exist to profit and every single position, even from you know, the CEO yes. down to the janitor, is replaceable. No! God, please, no! No!
No! And I used to think when I started working in investment banking that I was so important and so awesome just because I was like a 22 year old working on these multi-million dollar M&A deals when like most of the people my age weren't working on such impactful things. And I just remember one day I came into work and there were a bunch of analysts huddled around in a corner of the bullpen. They were whispering really silently. And I went over there and it turns out that someone who was our age working at a bank across the street had just passed away from overwork and it had made social media, it made the news, it was a big deal. But then I also remember a week later, everything stopped and it was as if nobody even remembered that somebody had died a week earlier. And that really made me think, like, if I didn't come to work the next day, would anyone be bothered or would anyone, you know, notice or miss me? And the answer was pretty clear. And so I think that that day I learned that you should never sacrifice anything uh, that you truly value, whether it's your health, your relationships, your sanity. You should never sacrifice those things for a job, no matter how prestigious or how high paying it is. And that actually brings me to my third lesson, which is if you don't decide what your values are, then eventually somebody else will decide for you. So I want to say that working your first full-time job out of college is an awesome experience because the first time in your life you're making a lot of money, you're no longer in school, and you've cast off this label that you've worn your whole life which is being a student. But then you're presented with a new problem and a new challenge which is figuring out who you actually want to be. And when I had graduated college, I didn't really have a clear idea of what sort of life I wanted to live or who I wanted to be. And so ultimately I ended up prescribing to a lot of the values that those around me prescribed for me. So as an investment banker, I was expected to give everything for the job and to work really long hours at the expense of my health and my relationships and my sanity and to be proud of the fact that I worked harder than 90% of people out there and was paid well for it. But there was one day, I think when I was about six months in the job that I started working at around 9 a.m. and then I ended the night at 3 a.m. the next day. So I had worked about 18 hours and I remember going into the office the next morning and my associate, was there and he greeted me and then he was just telling people around the bullpen about how oh like matt stayed up till 3 a.m last night getting this deck done he's an absolute beast we wouldn't have been able to do it without him and despite all of his praise i just remember thinking to myself wow like is this really the kind of person that i want to be do i want to be someone who is known to you know sacrifice their well-being for the job or someone who glorifies overwork and acts like it's a badge of honor just because i you know destroyed my body by staying up till three in the morning working and so that's when i realized that if i didn't decide what my values were and what i wanted my life to look like then ultimately i would just be influenced by by everyone around me. And I'm not saying that you have to know exactly what you want your life to look like coming out of college. I certainly still don't know what I want my life to look like. I have a better idea now than I did when I just graduated, but I think it's still a process of learning about what I enjoy and what I value in life and then taking action towards those steps. It's now been a year since I left investment banking, and despite all of its struggles and challenges and all the frustrating moments, I never would have learned these three lessons if I hadn't just gone there and done it. And I know this is kind of cliche, but there's really no better teacher in life than experience. And so this is also why I always tell people, go out there, do networking calls, do internships to really learn what the job is actually like before making any sort of judgment based on what you read online or what you just hear from people, because experience is gonna teach you things that you can't learn online. So if you have a goal or you have a dream that you've been thinking about and you're just waiting for the right moment, just do it because you're never gonna regret starting now. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. And if you found it helpful, please consider hitting the like and the subscribe button. And let me know in the comments below if you resonate with any of these three lessons that I've just shared with you today. And also let me know what sort of content you want me to put out next. Thanks.